Hello, YouTube. Today in the Naughty Librarian, I am continuing the Vampire Chronicles journey, and today I read Vittorio the Vampire by Anne Rice. This is, again, kind of like a side quest of the Vampire Chronicles. It's about uh, Vittorio the Vampire, and it's just kind of um, like, I don't know, it's, it's a novella for Anne Rice. It's still kind of a full-length novel, honestly, <laughs> but um, for Anne Rice, it's a novella. And it's just a story about Vittorio, who's a vampire. And actually, he's like not involved in anything else, at least that I've read so far in the series. He's just kind of a random vampire she made up so she could write a story about him. It actually does not mention Lestat whatsoever. He makes no appearances in here. They have never met. So it's kind of the first time we're reading a vampire story that has nothing to do with Lestat whatsoever. So it's kind of fun. I mean, it, it gets mentioned briefly that like David had wrote to him and asked him to write his story. That's maybe the most connection we get. And even then it's very flimsy. So it's completely a non sequitur, but it's fun to read. So let's get into what happened during Vittorio the Vampire. So Vittorio starts in about 1450 in Tuscany, Italy. And Vittorio, he's like a 16 year old nobleman kid. Um, he's like, although like he does say in the book that he's a really well-developed 16 year old, he could pass for like a young adult. So he's like a TV show 16 year old where you're like, that person is obviously not 16 years old, <laughs> but like they're playing 16. I feel like he's one of those. And he just talks about like his family and stuff. Um, it, it's a pretty normal family life for that era. Um, you know, he's a nobleman, um, his dad's a noble. Um, you know, he does all the normal 16 year old stuff uh, a kid in this era would do. Like he, he likes hunting and reading and he likes art, um, peasant girls, etc. Like all the things 16 year olds in this era would be dealing with, he deals with. This is a very normal family story to start with. And then things kind of like start happening for the worst, honestly. Uh, one night, uh, this strange guy comes to like their castle. And he has this huge broadsword and stuff. And he shows up and he's like, hey, I want to see like the owner of the house. But he has to come out to me in the dark because like I don't like light. So he has to come to me. Obviously vampire. And the dad is like, who the fuck does he think he is? This is my house. Fine. I will go deal with this jabroni. So he goes out and he's like, get the fuck out of here. He kicks him out. But... When he meets the guy, he's like, oh shit, something bad's coming. Because I think the dad knew, like, this is a vampire. I don't know. It never really gets, like, expressly said. But, like, he knew shit was going to go down. So the next night, the, the, the dad, he gathers all of the family. Like, um, Thorio, his brother and his sister, um, his mom, his aunt and uncle. All the people who live there. They, he gathers them all in the chapel. And they're, they're going to hide there because he knows, like, broadsword guy is probably going to show up again. And he does. Broadsword guy does show up again, except he brought a bunch of other dudes with him. So the dad knows shit's about to go down. He opens this trap door that no one knew about. And he's like, Victoria, you get your brother and your sister and you go in the hole. You go in the hole at the crypt. You're going to hide. And he's like, I'm 16. I want to fight. He's like, get down there and protect your brother and your sister. So he's like, okay, fine. So Vittorio and his siblings, he gets put into the crypt. He tries to bring like his mom and stuff, but she's like paralyzed with fear. So she doesn't end up getting into the crypt. And, and nothing happens for a little bit until like the screaming starts and it's just like horrible sounds and Vittorio knows he has to stay down there to protect his siblings. And once everything goes silent, which is not what you want to hear after all of the screaming, it goes silent and the trap door gets ripped off and, and Vittorio is like, he pulls out his sword. He's like, okay, I got to protect my, my siblings. And this, this woman comes down and she's like really pretty and like around Victorio's age. And he's just like, you know, he's still 16. So he's kind of like bamboozled a little bit. He's like, you're really pretty. What's happening? And then like, she's super strong and kind of just shoves him, grabs his brother and sister, runs out the trap door, carrying them both. And he's like, the fuck is happening? So he comes up the stairs and he's like chasing after them. He has a sword, he starts yelling. And then um, this this woman stops and, and she sees him in, I don't know, they have like a connection right away. So she like lets the brother and sister go. She drops them. However, this doesn't really make a difference because Broadsword Guy was still there. And he comes up right then 
and like kills both of them. He kills Mateo's brother and sister who are like kids. It, it like horribly. <laughs> and, and Vittorio is crushed. He's horrified. He's grief stricken. So he's like trying to fight them off. And this woman, uh, her name is Ursula. And she, she stops a broadsword guy from killing Vittorio too. She's like, no, don't kill him. I don't want him to die. And the broadsword's like, okay, fucking fine, but we gotta go. And she's like, all right. So she, she manages to save Vittorio. And Vittorio's not pleased about this. He's still really pissed. His brother and sister have been murdered brutally. So he, he runs up with his sword and he's just like, ah, you wish. And he like swipes at her and he, he cuts off her arm. And she just stares at him doing nothing. And he's just like, uh, like, he's like, I don't, I don't have a follow up to this. <laughs> like he cut off her arm and, and she just picks up her arm and sticks it back on and like, it reattaches and like it heals. And he's like, nope, what is this demon rate? Like Vittorio's having a rough night. And so she sticks her arm back on and she just takes off into the night. So the sun rises and Vittorio realizes that everyone is dead literally everybody. And then this group of people, these raiders who came to his house and killed everybody, they also were like in the village around like his castle. And they they took like other children too in the night. They took a bunch of people. And Vittorio, he, he doesn't know what to do. So he just collects all of his family members. He brings them down to the crypt. And then he needs to get out of there because they could come back. So he's like, okay, I'm gonna scavenge all of like the jewels and the money and like everything I can find, weapons, etc. I'm gonna scavenge it all and get out of here and make a plan. So he gets all the stuff and he and he leaves plan and revenge. So he gets to the next town over and it's after dark and um, he gets led into the town. Everyone's like, why were you out in the dark in the forest? Like, are you stupid? And he's like, I got lost, whatever. And he checks into an inn, goes to bed. He's like, okay, I'm gonna, get up the next morning and get this revenge plan started. However, in the night, he kind of wakes up in bed and who is there with him? Ursula. Ursula's in his room and she's kind of like seducing him. She's like, listen to me, you gotta get the fuck out of town. You gotta go to Florence or something. I don't know, but you need to leave. Like, I'm not gonna be able to save you forever. Like, there are bad people around, you gotta go. She's trying to protect him. And, and along the way of this like seduction, like telling him to run situation, she drinks a little bit of his blood. She gives him a little bit of her blood. It's like a whole thing. And then she just runs off into the night. So Vittorio freaked out by this because he's like, I just drank blood, what's happening? And he, he wakes up the next morning. He's like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna go see some priests. Like <laughs> things have gone beyond my control to fix. So he goes to the priests. And he's like, listen to me, there's fucking demons in town. This is what happened. And the priests are really freaked out and they're like, get the fuck out of here. They get really angry. And he's just like, what do you mean get out of here? And they're like, you better shut your mouth and leave. And he's like, you're fucking in on it, aren't you? So these priests are bad guys. They know about the vampires and they're aiding and abetting. And he's like, oh shit, this is not safe. So he goes back to the inn and he's like, oh, I need to rethink my plan for revenge. I thought the church was gonna send troops and I could fight the demons, but apparently not. So he's eating dinner, thinking about the, all these like punk bitch priests he met, like going, I don't know what the fuck to do. And then these other priests from like a different order come and sit down with them and they're like, oh, hey, like, uh, I hear you didn't have good luck with the other guys, maybe you wanna try us, you know, like priest jokes. And he's just like, all, all right, whatever. And these priests are nice guys. And they're like kind of low key laying out the situation in a way where they don't expressly say what's going on, but they let him know, hey, shit in this town is fucked up and you should get out of here. Like they're being, like they're warning him. This town is called Santa Madalana and there's no sick people. There's no uh, disabled people. There's not a lot of children. Like it's a weird town where there's no crime or any, you know, uh, people getting into mischief. There's no disabled people. It's a weird town. He's like, what's going on with this? And the other priests are like, yeah, you know, it's a really weird place where there's none of those types of people. Am I right? <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> like, they're just telling him what's going on. So basically, something is rotten in the state of Santa Madalena, and 
Vittorio should get out of town. And the priests, they tell him this, and then under no circumstances are you to leave the town by the north road. Don't go north, whatever you do, do not go north, only go south, don't go north. They don't ask questions, but don't go north, okay? You get me? Like, the priests are trying to save him. Like, it's becoming clearer and clearer here that, like, obviously this town has made a deal with these vampires that they give them their, like, undesirables in exchange for leaving the rest of them alone. So, yikes. This is not a town full of good people. This is a town full of shitty people doing shitty things. But Vittorio is a young man on a mission for revenge, so of course he decides, okay, well, I'm definitely going to go on this north road out of town. So he does that. He ends up at this, like, ruined castle, and he's looking around, and he's just like, oh, shit. He's out this window. The sun is setting, and is right at dusk, and he sees the vampires leaving this castle. Like, he's in a tower. They're coming out the bottom. And, and then they just descend on the town. And he's just like, oh, shit, they're just, like, letting these vampires do this? What the fuck is happening here? And as he's watching this happen, he gets snuck up on by one of the vampires. And he, like, attacks him. He hits him on the head. And he throws him in a sack. So now, now Vittorio's in a sack. <laughs> he's just getting carried off by this vampire. The vampire's, like, gonna take him back to the coven or whatever. But Vittorio, he's got, like, a boot dagger. So he just starts stabbing the vampire and stuff. The vampire goes, owie, and he drops him. And, like, Victorio gets out of it. And, and once he's loose, he, like, goes after the vampire. And he ends up cutting off the vampire's head with his sword. So, like, Vittorio, I know he's, like, 16. But, like, he's kind of a badass 16-year-old. So after he cuts off the guy's head, you know, all the rest of the vampires, they all show up. And they're like, what's going on here? Why is our friend missing his head? <laughs> like, they're a little upset and they're going to hurt him. But Ursula shows up and she's like, stop it, stop it, stop it, don't hurt him. I, I, no, she like jumps in front of him like, no, don't hurt Vittorio, I like him a lot. And they're like, fine, we'll bring him back to the coven. We'll let the coven leader Florian deal with him. So Ursula like doesn't want him to get hurt. So she's like, fine, whatever. So she's like, she, she drinks a bunch of his blood to make him like kind of loopy and docile. So he passes out and they bring him back to the coven and it's called the Court of the Ruby Grail. Like it's very dramatic for these vampires. <laughs> so they get there, it's vampire dinner time. Everyone's kind of in this like room all sitting down to dinner. And um, they, they bring in Vittorio and Ursula's begging the like the coven leader Flory and she's like, please don't kill him. Don't kill him. I don't I really like him. Don't kill him, please. Um, let, turn him into a vampire. You know, we just lost a vampire. We got to replace him. Like make Vittorio a vampire. This is a great idea. But Vittorio, he he's not he's not pro turn into a vampire at this point. Vampires killed his whole family. He is upset. So he's just like, nope. You're all demons. I will never join you. Get fucked. You know, etc. The whole thing. He just keeps running his mouth. And Ursula's like, be quiet. I'm trying to help. <laughs> but like, nope. He's just like, Ursula, I like you. You're like the best of them and you're hot. So like, I'm into you, but the rest of these guys could go get fucked. So it's a whole thing. Um, but eventually Florian's like, uh, Ursula, fine. I won't kill him right now. Bring him to the coop and leave him there and we'll deal with it later. The coop is where they keep all of their humans they take from the town. So it's full of like um, really old people, uh, disabled people, etc., children, etc. All these people are in this little like area. And it's like straight up demented how they're keeping these people. They basically have these big cauldrons of soup around and this is what the people eat except every day some of the vampires go in there as a sacrifice and they like bleed some of their blood into the soup pots and then occasionally they'll grab a human and make put their blood in the soup pots and then have everybody drink it and they just leave Vittorio there they they leave him there and they're like hey you stay here now and Ursula is like checking on him she's like are you okay like just just stay here I'll fix this and he's just like I don't really have a choice and I'm also about to pass out <laughs> so she's like it's okay I'll, I'll deal with this so they part and he just stays in the coop. The whole day goes by and uh, he basically was passed out the whole time. It's nighttime again. One of the vampires, they come down, they grab Vittorio. They're like, hey guys, guess what? You're coming to vampire church tonight. It's a whole thing. Clean up, you're filthy. Have you ever wondered what Catholic mass would look like if it were held by satanic vampires? <laughs> well, boy, do I have the book for you. It's Vittorio the vampire because that's what happens here. 
it's like a weird Catholic mass satanic vampire mashup of things where they like, you know, bring in a sacrifice for the altar and they all like take sips of, you know, that like the sacrament essentially, but like, it's like, yikes. There's also a big like statue of Satan in there. It's a lot. <laughs> it's just a lot to deal with. It feels almost like cheesy horror movie level imagery, but we're gonna go with it. Since Vittorio is at this mass, he's supposed to be the main attraction. He's going to be sacrificed. And Ursula, she's there. She convinces Florian, the leader, to not sacrifice him. She's like, please, please don't do it. I'd never ask for anything. For fuck's sake, just don't kill Vittorio. I like him. And Florian has a soft spot for Ursula, so he's like, oh, fine, okay, fine. We'll set him free. We'll like drug him and stuff to make all his like memories fuzzy and we'll just leave him in a town. And then like, if he tries to tell anybody what, what happened, no one's gonna believe him. They're just gonna think he's crazy. You know, classic vampire gaslighting here. <laughs> so that's essentially what they do. They drug him, he gets all fucked up and they leave him in Florence. And like the vampires actually kind of did him a solid here because they left him in Florence with like all of his money and jewels and his like daggers and stuff that he came with. Like they didn't like leave him in like an alley with no money where people would really think he's crazy. They left him in the middle of Florence with like his family ring on and shit. Like everyone's gonna know he's a noble. Like it was kind of a poor planning on the vampires part. It's like a plot hole that's never really discussed in the book, but it's just like, why would you leave him? with all of his stuff that says like he's a nobleman. Like people listen to noblemen, even if they are crazy. <laughs> so I'm just saying, it's a, it's bad planning. Anyway, he gets found in the city by these two guys and they're actually nice. And they're like, listen, I can tell you're a rich guy. We're probably the only people in this town who aren't gonna try to rob you. We're just trying to figure out where to bring you because you're obviously someone important. Like just tell us where you need to go. But he's like all beat up. So he's like not making any sense and he's drugged. So they're like, start walking will follow like I don't know what to do to help you <laughs> so Vittorio just starts walking around and he and he figures out he's in Florence and he goes to the studio of Fra Filippo who is his favorite artist of all time and he sees in the doorway these two dudes and he's like oh my gosh these are literal angels I can see them they're angels and he starts telling the guys with him he's like hey do you see these guys and they're talking and stuff and they're like ain't nobody there homie like do you need a do you need a doctor? Like no one can see the angels except for Vittorio. So he goes up to the angels and he's just like, oh my gosh, you're angels, I can see you. And the angels turn to Vittorio and they're like, why can you see us? We are equally as confused by this as you are. So they're also shocked that a human can see them. Um, their names are Ramiel and Cetheus. And they're kind of like the guardian angels for Fra Filippo. And like Fra Filippo is just a fuck up of an artist. Like he keeps running off with like sex workers and like booze and like all this kind of stuff. And everyone's trying to keep him under control, but he's just like a lunatic. <laughs> and the, the poor like guardian angels are just at their wits end. And they're like, okay, this is obviously a thing I think we should like investigate because humans can't see us. So they start listening to Vittorio and he's just like, you need to help me because like there's demons, yo. Like we gotta fight demons. And they're like, okay, okay, we'll stay with you. You're obviously in a, in a, in a position where you have seen some shit. So the angels, they kind of whisper to the dudes that are with uh, Vittorio, like, hey, bring them to the monks. The monks are friends with the Medicis and his dad was friends with the Medicis and they'll like take good care of him. So the dude's with him, they're like, okay, we're gonna take you to the monks now. So they bring him to these monks so he can like recover and everything. And he has his family like ring on. So he tells them who he is, like Vittorio de Ramiri, I think is his name. So like they know the name and he's like related, like not related, but like friends with the Medicis who are like a big deal. So they're like, okay, Guess what? We'll tell Cosimo Medici that you're here. He vouches for you, etc. We'll take good care of you. So like he's he's getting the care he needs at this point. And so he's getting taken to the monks and the and he's like, Angels, you can't leave me. You gotta stay with me. And the angels are like, okay, we're gonna stay with you. You can see us. This is obviously for a reason. 
just get some rest. You obviously need it. Vittorio, he like convalesces during this time. He, he gets some rest. He's really violently ill because he had to drink that like the soup in the coop. But he like rests. He, he starts feeling better. He starts going to like the libraries at the monastery trying to find like um, evidence about like these blood sucking demons that he can like bring to the head priest and be like, listen, these guys killed my family. Here's all these like texts that talk about them. They're real. We got to get a bunch of soldiers and fight the demons. So he's still on his revenge kick and he's like, and I know where they are too. So let's go. So that is, so he's in the library. He's like trying to find all this information and a new angel comes to him. Ramiel and Cepheus, they went and got like a bigger deal angel and his name is Mastima. And he's not a guardian angel, he's like a bruiser angel. He's a soldier, he's wearing like full armor and stuff. Big sword energy, I guess. <laughs> and Vittorio's like, please, will you help me? You obviously are like the right guy who kills demons and shit. And Massimo's like, no, I can't do that because I haven't been ordered to do that. Like, you know, God hasn't told me to go kill all the vampires. I can't just do that. But I could help you do that if you want. So, you know, finding a loophole here. He's going with the loophole. <laughs> so the angels, uh, Ramiel, Cepheus, Massimo, they're gonna help Vittorio kill the vampires. So they make a big plan. Um, once the sun comes up, they're gonna help Vittorio do all the killing. They're just gonna be there for backup. However, Vittorio is already feeling a little conflicted about Ursula because he knows that she's there. He doesn't want to kill her necessarily because she seems nicer than all the rest of them. And he, and he, she has been trying to save him. Also, she's hot. So he's like, mm, is it, her soul's going to go to hell probably. And I can't do that to her. I, I love her somehow. Mind you, he's 16. He's just being, you know, it might be like a little bit of a situation causing dramatics. But um, yeah, he's kind of like conflicted about Ursula, but he's less like, he's very pro killing the rest of them. He's like the rest of those vampires, fuck them. So the next morning, uh, Vittorio, he wakes up, he has his like gearing up montage of getting ready to go kill these vampires. The angels show up, they like transport, teleport him to the vampire castle. He's just like there. And what time is it now? Oh, it's murder o'clock. So Vittorio, he goes around and he finds all the vampires in their like sleeping place and he just starts chopping off heads. He just kills all the vampires. He chops off all of their heads. And there's like one little sunny spot in the room. So he just throws the head in the sun spot and the heads just like burn. So obviously the vampires aren't coming back. <laughs> their heads are like little ashy piles. Wow, this is quite the morning. He hasn't even had breakfast yet. And he kills all of the vampires until he gets to Ursula. And he's just like, oh, I can't do it. I can't do it. If I do it, she's going to go to hell and she doesn't deserve it because she's nice. And like, I, I, I'll try to save her. And then the angels are like, we went through a lot of trouble to help you do this. And you're saying you're not going to kill all the vampires. You're going to let one live. And he's like, she's a nice one. I'll help her repent. Like, it's like a whole thing. And the angels are like disappointed. They're like, Ugh fucking fine. You made your bed, lie in it. So the angels bone out. They leave him there. And he just is like, okay, I'm going to wait for Ursula to wake up and, and I'll talk to her and I'll get her to repent her sins, like a whole thing. So since he has some time until, you know, the sun goes down, he just takes a nap and um, he wakes up when it's dark and he's like, oh shit, it's dark. And Ursula's just like standing there over him and, and she's actually very happy that he's there and he killed everybody. She's like, Oh my gosh, Vittorio, you're the best. All those vampires sucked so bad. I hated them. You are so awesome. Guess what? Let's go free all the humans in the coop. It's what you want. And like, I'm, I'm okay to free them. They deserve to be freed. So like, she's like being a nice vampire here. They go to the coop. They free everybody. Except like not all of them leave because some of them are very either disabled or very sick or very, very old. So they just kind of don't leave. But everyone who's able to leave leaves. And then it's just them. It's this Vittorio and Ursula. And he's just, you know, he's kind of in love with her because she's saved him a bunch and she's hot. <laughs> you know, they haven't known each other that long. And, and she's talking to him. And it's like so obviously a trick, but he doesn't know any better, you know, because he's a 16-year-old. And she's like, Vittorio, 
thank you so much for saving me and like helping my soul. But I have all this demon blood in me. The only way to get it out is if like you suck it all out of me. You got to suck all the poison out of my blood. And he's like, of course, I'll help you whatever I can to help you get like free of your demonry. She's like, okay, great. First, I'll just get some of your blood out of your body so there's room for mine. So she's tricking him into becoming a vampire. It's like, oh no, oh no, like he's gonna figure this out. It's gonna go poorly and it kind of does. <laughs> so she, you know, she drains his blood. She makes him drink a bunch of her blood and then he wakes up going, oh fuck, I'm a vampire? You bitch, you turned me into a vampire. I didn't think I was that was gonna happen. Like, you know, he's like a little bit upset by it. She's like, please don't, I just, I'm in love with you and I didn't want to lose you. So I, I made you a vampire, sorry. So he's like, uh, fine, okay, let's just go eat the people that are still in the coop. So she and Vittorio go to the coop and they start eating the rest of the prisoners that were there and um, they leave the castle together. He's like, listen, I know I'm a vampire now and I'm still mad at you for tricking me, but like, I'm actually still in love with you. So like, whatever. But like, I'm not staying in this castle. This castle is fucked up. And she's like, I totally agree. Like, I don't like it here either. I know of a cool cave nearby. So like, let's go there. And he's like, done. So they go and like, hang out in a cave during the day. So once it becomes dark again, they decide like, hey, what are we gonna do now? And they decide, you know what, let's become Bonnie and Clyde. Like, let's go back to Sadam and Alana, that town full of all those shitty people. And let's start doling out some punishment. So they go back to Sada Manalata and they just start like killing everybody. And this is over a course of like several weeks. They go every night and they're like just terrorizing people and like eating all the people in the town still for being fucked up and doing what they did. And then finally they're down to like the last people in town. And they saved them for last for a reason because these are the nice priests that met Vittorio and told him, hey, you gotta get out of town. Like the only people in this town who weren't shitty people. And Ursula and Vittorio don't kill them because they weren't shitty people. They were the only people in town who said, this is really fucked up. We're not contributing to it, but you need to get out of here because we don't know how to stop it. Like the only good people in town. And um, he talks to them and he's just like, listen, I wanna tell you my story and I'm letting you live. But like, yikes, like this is some fucked up stuff that's going on up here. <laughs> like, so he's just kind of like talking to these priests, maybe kind of a confession situation, just like unburdening himself. And we also learn a little bit more about like Ursula's backstory because she had been a vampire for like 200 years at this point. Like she is very old. Um, basically she was kind of sold off as like a, like a child bride. She's around Vittorio's age and Vittorio's about 16. So she's probably like 15, 16 herself, uh, physically at least. And she was sold off, you know, as, as a bride to Florian, who was the leader of this coven of vampires. He bought a bride. And basically um, Florian, he, he bought her from her father. He assaulted her and then he turned her into a vampire like in a course of a few hours. So like, she's been with him for a long time. It was also why she was able to keep Florian from killing Vittorio because he still had this like soft spot for her. I think he felt bad about what he did to her generally. So like, that's why she got like so much leverage over him. And she had been, you know, a vampire for like 200 years and like Vittorio was the first person she met that she really, really liked. So now they're just like together and they're like, vampire boyfriend and girlfriend <laughs> but anyway they don't kill the priests they just leave them and they're like all right well we're gonna go off now okay bye thanks for being good people <laughs> like, they just go to florence um basically ursula hadn't been anywhere she's basically been in that like ruined castle for 200 years she's never been anywhere so uh victoria is like taking care of her bay he's like oh listen let's like travel why not so they go to Florence and um, his like whole family estate kind of gets settled by the Medicis because, you know, they were friends. His father and the Medicis were friends. So like all of his inheritance gets put into like a trust in a bank until he turns like 24, I think. So he just has to wait a few years and then he gets all of his money. So in the meantime, they move to Florence. They like get a house together. And this is still where Fra Filippo stays. So he goes around looking around town and he starts seeing the angels again. He saw he sees Ramiel and Cetheus again. And he goes up and talks to them. And he's like, hey, oh, sorry about not killing Ursula. And now I'm a vampire. And they're like disappointed in him, obviously. But they're like, 
yeah, okay, fine. <laughs> like, they're, like, disappointed, but they're not, like, mad at him, I guess. Victorio's actually stunned at this point. He's like, wait a minute, I'm a vampire. I'm, like, kind of a demon now. Why can't I still see you? And they're like, fuck if I know. The angels don't know either why you can see them. And, you know, if, if only he saw Ramiel and Cepheus, it would have been okay. But guess who else comes and sees him? Mastima, who is mega pissed at him. He's like, I almost broke orders to help you kill vampires and then you just became one. Like, Massima's pissed at him. So he's like, oh, okay, this is how you want to play this game? Fine. I'm going to give you a gift, Vittorio. And, like, Vittorio should have said no thank you to this gift, but, like, he can't. And um, Massima basically gives him the gift of being able to see human souls. So now he can see angels and human souls. And everybody looks like this glowing golden thing. It's kind of a curse in the end because now every time Vittorio kills a human, he will see the human soul like go out. He will see the light turn off. So it's a bit of a curse and um, yikes. So Massimo's pissed and he's just like, good luck dealing with this forever. <laughs> and then time goes on and here we are in the present. And um, you know, Vittorio's done telling his story. He and Ursula are still together. After like 500 years, they're still together. So that's like some real love shit. I mean, if they were totally together for a little bit and they broke up, like it would be much more tragic than like, oh no, like I met my soulmate and we both became vampires. You know, it's a little different. You know, it's tragic, but like they're still together 500 years later. Like they're making it work. And you know, Vittorio, he can still see human souls. And um, he's kind of just learned to live with the beautiful tragedy of it all. And that's just the story. And uh, ta-da, the Vittorio the Vampire. It's just like a vampire story of Vittorio's origins. Um, he has really nothing to do with any of our main cast of vampires. He's just like another vampire. Um, I don't know if he comes into play in later books in the series because I haven't read them all yet. But uh, for right now, Vittorio. He's a guy and he's like Bonnie and Clyde with Ursula 500 years strong. So overall, it's not the best book. Like I think I ended up giving it like three stars because like it's fine. It's just ultimately a story. Like it doesn't really like achieve anything. <laughs> it's just kind of like, here's a vampire story, la la la. And it's fine. It is what it is. You know, it wasn't like, wow, this is adding something to the ongoing Vampire Chronicles series is just kind of a story. So it is what it is. It was, it's fun. Let me know in the comments down below. Um, I don't know. What's another vampire origin story that you really like? Or um, do you have any other Vampire Chronicles stories that you would really want to hear the origin of? Let me know in the comments down below. If you like this video, make sure you give it a like. And if you want to see more videos, make sure you subscribe. Also, if you want cool exclusive content, including a book club and early access to videos, you can consider becoming a channel member or a patron. The links for that are in the description down below. And on that note, I will see you guys soon. Bye!